Today I'll be teaching you how to make these kind of bases. After today, hopefully you can make something like this. Today we'll just be going over the bases. So I might make another video on like pads, leads and what else. All right, so we're going to start off with the top base. So I like to get a one shot with something with a lot of harmonics already, something saturated. So I'm going to be using this kit, but oversampled. Yeah, that one's pretty cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click it and I like to put it in a fruity granulizer. So if your sample is long enough, you can actually just drag it in there like this. But using fruity granulizer can add some cool dynamics so that your bass seems like it's moving. It just adds a little touch that makes your bass a little more interesting. So what I like to do is right click hold and type in a value of one. So what this does is that it's only going to play this part over and over and over again. Because if you don't do that, it's just going to play the whole thing. So now, it sounds pretty bad. But after some tweaking, we can make it sound a little better. If you're using a one shot, remember to make sure it's playing C. In this case, it, the bass note is a G. So what we're going to do is find G, right click above it. And now it's in tune. And what we're looking for is make it flat but with waves, if you know what I mean. Okay, that should be fine for now. So I'm just gonna route it to base. All right, so now what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna start adding saturation and distortion. You can use a uh, fruity fast disc if you don't have decapitator, but just get any saturation plugin. And we're gonna start off, we're gonna go through every style. Nah, not really, maybe. Yeah, we're looking for that high tonality. And we're going to do a fastest. Just add subtle distortion. Uh, not really subtle at first. You want a mix of subtle and heavy distortion. Now for the top base, we don't really care about the low end information because we're just going to cut it out anyways right now. We're going to be doing this a lot. We're going to be cutting out the 300s area because that's pretty muddy. And if you ever look at um, the waveforms for like Heimanu or Hex Cougar, you're going to see a lot of times there's going to be barely anything around this area. If you listen closely, that's what you kind of want to get rid of, but you don't want to completely get rid of it. You just want to minimize it as much as possible. So we're going to add another decapitator. We're just going to move down this. And if you want to go back, I forgot about this. You can add an OTT. So now I like to go to my sub bass. I like to make it in serum. So let's just get a sine wave in here. This one already, we're gonna edit the waveform right here. It already has a few harmonics, as you can see. But we're gonna reinforce those harmonics. These first couple of harmonics right here are the are like really good for basses. 
All right, that should be good. We're gonna lower it two octaves. We're just gonna add a bit of distortion. OTT. Alright now so we're just gonna add some distortion. It's not gonna be as heavy as the top one because we want this to be pretty solid. just gonna EQ so as you can see I'm making room for each bass the top is only high frequencies and the sub is only low if they're clashing it might cause some phasing and muddiness now we're gonna go to the mid bass and it's only going to be around right here and probably over here. So I like to use a square on a saw. The square has really good low low end harmonics. So now this part is optional. You can have you can have this at one or you can have it 16. If you want it to have like more of that cool Reese kind of stuff. And we're gonna put a filter on it. ozone 9 imager if you don't have a if you don't have this plugin or like a an imager plugin that can do multi bands i'm pretty sure there's one in patcher there's a lot of cool presets here um you can look through that but i don't need to but we want the lows like we want the low to be mono but we want to keep like the mids kind of stereo. And now we're just going to EQ. If you don't have Ozone Imager, I guess you could do it in Pro-Q3. But if you don't have Pro-Q3, then good luck finding another way. We're going to be making room for the sub. Make room for the for the lots of highs. The mid and the top bass they can overlap a bit. All right, so this is how it sounds all together. It sounds massive, doesn't it? And once you do that, we're gonna route it to one channel and call this whatever you wanna like glue it together. You can use a glue, you can use a glue compressor, or you can just use an OTT. And I like to do this, this, and this. Okay, right, so that's a bit too much. And here, you can add another decapitator. And here we just add an EQ 
get rid of a lot of 300s now. And that's pretty cool. That's pretty much it, how you do it. And that's really important because look at, listen to this. It sounds cool, and to some of you it might sound better than this. But once you get, once you train your ears more, you're gonna notice like the 300 area is really dangerous. Well, for trap music especially. I recommend you get span or some kind of spectral imager or yeah, spectrum analysis and just analyze like your favorite songs and for a lot of trap it's going to be a dip in the 300s like the whole master like the drop is gonna have like a huge dip here unless you're like john's or like someone acid someone who uses like acid bases because those the tonality is gonna be a lot in the 300 but if you're looking for like a clean mix, usually there's not going to be much in the 300s. It's going to be like half or maybe even like almost nothing. If so, Stinger by RL Grime and ISO EXO, those guys are absolute legends. So if you want to look at like good mixes, look at them because they know what they're doing for sure. And here's a song that Himanu made. So as you can see, why do people do this? It's to make clarity. So the bass, you want to hear the bass and the mids and the and the top, the height. And this area right here is like kind of like a transition between the lows and the mids. So if you blur like that part, then it will kind of be messy so you just want over here you want your fundamental bass notes and a few harmonics but i am not really an expert in like mixing engineers this is just what i've noticed so this is not like a end all be all rule this is like a general rule of thumb that i like to mix and my homie shameless like if you look at his mixes he he likes to make make it thick so that's just a preference like if you look at his stuff it's going to be like pretty flat over here like it sounds cool still so let's listen to our bass again yeah that's pretty much how you make like the basses for that and if you want to put like a a layer over here highlight these guys set children here's what the bass would sound like in full context with a full mix and everything so I remade pretty much the whole bass. Um, this is what it sounds like. And again, this is the bass soloed. So it's not the exact same, but you get the picture. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. If you want to learn how to make like the leads in this song, just comment below. Or if you have any other questions, comment them down below.